get started here. Um, HG Models makes two different kits uh, for the Hemet truck, and it fits both the 801 and the 802. Uh, the 801 is the truck version, the 802 is the tractor version. This is the sound system, and this is the light system. Now, originally, I thought I would do my own lights, but when I looked at the pictures of this online, they have some interesting light fixtures like this one that has a little circuit board it's got a little side light and headlights all built into a nice little circuit board and this light strip here which I don't know where it goes yet in a light and I thought those were quite intriguing plus it was really inexpensive for the whole light kit so I felt, why not? Let's just go with the, the factory light kit and see how it looks. So we've got a circuit board here, and there's another little strip with some lights on it. Our circuit board and instructions. Always nice to use the factory stuff. Oh, it even has uh, English. So far I found the, uh, the instructions for this uh, truck really nice. Besides the instructions that come in the kit, there's also instructions in the manual for the truck itself, including a, uh, a diagram, where to mount everything, So that takes care of the lights. Let's look at the sound system here. The sound system has a uh, speaker It's designed to fit up in the front grill of the truck. And that was another reason why I picked their sound system. Again, it was inexpensive. But having it fit right in is pretty nice. So there's our speaker. And that mounts up underneath this grill here, as far as I can tell. Again, we've got our speaker, got our wiring, sound module. Let's take a look at this. Sound module, wiring, even has a, a double Dean's plug to get power. And again, instructions, a couple tie wraps, and some tape. So that looks pretty straightforward to install. Both of these kits require disassembly of the Hemet, and I'm going to uh, figure out how to take that apart. Plus, I've had a lot of people ask, asking about the diffs, and it has open diffs. Is there a way to lock them? The kit actually came with two locking pins, but I can't find any place to lock them. So I'm going to pull apart one of the diffs, see what kind of a job they do um, greasing them at the factory and, uh, and reassembling them. I'll probably do that in a second video. This video is going to be the lights and the sound, so let's get to work on that. All right, I'm trying to remove this uh, forward cab section. According to the instructions, all I should need to do is remove two screws, which are down in here, and I pull them out, and then the two shackles on the front, and it should slide off. But it's not sliding off. So we'll pull off this uh, skid plate. I already removed a bunch of the screws. see if I can see what's going on here. What's going on is there's a section right here on the frame that's hitting something on the body and not letting me slide it off. So we'll continue to do a little work with this and see what we've got. I'll, I think I'll pull this entire front piece off so we can get a better look. I pulled the two screws here and three screws here. So I've got this last remaining screw to pull out. 
Should remove this. Okay, there we go. Remove the whole front plate. That whole front plate is metal. And now the cab comes off in one unit. Now that's, that's pretty nice and it looks fairly easy to disassemble because I want to get in there and detail the interior. So, looks like just a few screws I can pull this whole unit apart. So I'm going to set that aside. I'll set the front grill aside. You can see here that when this was sliding over that it wouldn't slide back because of interference here. So now I've got the cab off, got the front of the truck off, get a really good look at the steering assembly. Flip the truck over here. I can see the front end of the engine. I can see the fan blades here and the engine detail servos. So I will uh, see what else we have to turn take apart and then we can work on this speaker. It looks like the speaker fits. In here like this. It's already lined up with a couple screws down here and a screw boss in the back. And then that will place it right behind the engine grill. So we'll get to work on some of that and see what we've got going on. Mm. Well, one thing I determined for sure, you need to put the lights and the sound in at the same time. I also think I spotted where my long light bar goes. So we need to pull the cab apart. To do that, we have to remove this floor for the speaker mounting. Pull that out. I already pulled some of the screws out. One thing nice about this cab is everything is screwed together, so it's easy to take it apart. There's four screws in the back here, two here, and two here. And then this whole unit just lifts out. So there we have our interior, which is really nice. And uh, this is great. The seats are screwed in, everything's screwed in, so I can take it all apart for painting and detailing, which I plan on doing. I'm not going to do that today, but future video. And then our cab. I even re reproduced the, the headliner nicely with the grills, uh, steering, doors here. Really a, a great way to good look at it. I get a good look at it. So I know our lights are going to mount up here and probably up underneath here. So I'm going to start taking a look <coughs> Excuse me, at the lights and see how those mount and then we'll continue to look at the uh, the speaker and start back on the chassis. So on the front end all these parts are plastic with the exception of this front grill which is very heavy metal and uh, nicely put together with screws easy to work on. Take it apart. So here's our sound system, our light system starting to figure this out. The sound system has a wire that runs all the way back to this Dean's plug designed to plug into the plug already on the truck and then into the battery. I don't like all these stacked plugs together so I'm going to cut this apart and wire it straight in to the system. This is our light bar for the the cab roof up in here and this light is for the flasher on top. Okay, here's our headlight assembly. That's obviously going to mount in here with the little bulb coming out as the side marker. And there's our tail light assembly. So the light kit includes the, the front, left and rights, the overhead, 
and the tail lights. And this board has a lot of slots in it that are unused. The instructions actually quite nicely lay out what each <clears throat> light set is for. For example, we have the headlamps, cornering lamps, fog lamps, stop lamps. Hardly any of these are used, so this kit gives you the basic lights, but the nice thing is it gives you the ability to add a lot more lights in the future, which I will probably do. The sound system, pretty straightforward. Power, input and output, so you can plug in the, the receiver channel for the throttle and then go back out. It has two outputs for speakers. We're only going to use one. That just plugs in. Actually pretty simple. And this goes to channel 3. I don't know exactly why. It's a, it's a sense wire. We'll find out later. These are designed to mount. Here's our floor that we took apart. And this is the, the floor where the speaker mounts right here. Okay, so when you lift this floor out, this is designed to mount in there, and this is designed to mount in there, and then this goes back in and the speaker covers it. So every component is hidden in the cab underneath the floor. And that's nice because with this open framework on the, on the helmet, there's not a lot of places to hide things. So that's the structure of, of how everything works. We have to remove the cab roof, a bunch of screws, after you move the steering wheel, I'll go ahead and pull all those out off camera, and then we'll see how some of these components fit. To access the, uh, the roof, I've removed all the screws. I also removed these little back plates that were in here against the lights. And these are nice because they're set up so you could use individual LEDs if you wanted to do your own lighting. The dash then just lifts up. So we've got our, our roof. This back panel right here just pulls up and comes out. And you can get in here and remove the panel. So you can see there's little strips in here that the light bar fits into. The light bar has a little push button. I'm assuming that's some kind of a mode switch. It just drops into the little channels in here. It does not stay tightly. So it looks like uh, the fact that the roof goes on, holds it in. And then the, the LED here for the, for the blinker, you just pull off the cover And then it sits in here. Wires pop out through there. And the cap goes back on. So then that, that drops back in in the roof slot. Like this. So I'm going to go ahead and get this put in here. I'll have the little mode button up. I'm going to run the wiring up the corner here down behind the dash and then actually the wires from there and the headlights both come out through these holes and run right into the wiring board and you can see that that fits here. Those holes are way down there hidden pretty well it's behind the dash so it makes actually for nicely hidden wiring. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and put this together we'll see what it looks like. Got the uh, roof back in, dash back in. You can see, well, maybe you can see how the wire runs up the inside here, and it's covered with a covering, so it's very hidden. And then these wires are all be up in, inside the dash. So the light modules just plug in. Actually, nothing even holds them, but they are a very tight fit. So now I'm going to run the wires up through here and reinstall the floor. And if we do this right, everything will be nicely hidden.
like that. Okay, there's a, a light blocking plate on the back here. That, that's what holds it in. So when I, when I put this up in here, that'll help hold in the circuit board. I'll get this all screwed together. Since our light thing is going to mount here, everything is just convenient to plug in and we'll be ready to go. As I move along here, um, I wanted to hook up the sound system and see what it sounds like before I go through the trouble of installing it. And the electrical system on this vehicle is a little unique and a little bit complicated. There's a, a good drawing of it here. Basically the receiver is a little tiny thing and then it runs into a power regulator that then drives power to the servos. So the receiver only sends the sense lines to this and then this provides the power to drive the servos. I suspect they did that because the vehicle is so big and heavy that the, the servos would overload a traditional receiver. So it just took a little while for me to figure out what was going on here. So then I'm going to hook my lighting and my sound into the, the servo wires that output from this voltage regulator. So I hooked up the sound system and I'm glad I did because it's absolutely horrible. It I, I'm sorry. I, I cannot put this thing in my helmet. It is atrocious. So far I've really liked everything HG Models has done. But this sound sounds like a, a pimple-faced teenager coming up to me in a stoplight in his Honda and revving his engine. And I, I just can't do it. So I'm going to have to go to GT Power for sound or somebody else. But uh, I'll continue with the light. No, no, it can't be done. Uh, just like the sound, I hooked up all the lights outside the vehicle just to see how everything looked. And the lights are way more satisfactory than the sound. Um, I'm sorry, HG. I, I, your sound works good. It works with a throttle, but the sound is just not right. You need to work on that. Okay, so here's the tail lights, and they're uh, they're just lit up. And then when we turn, the turn signals go on. That works excellent. On the cab here, you can see the turn signals, and they blink both on the side and the front, which is nice. The headlights come on with the throttle, and the, the light bar up underneath the panel just lights up. Now, I've got a problem here because obviously I've got a blue light out, and it can't be anything I did because it's just one strip in there. I'm going to take it apart and take a look at it and see what's going on, but I suspect I've got a defective bar. I'm sure I can get that taken care of. Up in the cab, there's a little button, and you can just push the button, and it switches between different modes. So there's off, and there's like a solid mode, and then there's a different flashing modes, and you can just kind of cycle through them to get whichever version you like. I think they look great. Uh, I just I feel bad about that, that blue one. Um, but I'm sure that's an anomaly and I might even be able to take a look at it and see. I don't know. It's all surface mount stuff. So the lights are good. I'm going to go ahead and get those mounted. Uh, try and get that cleaned up. The only problem I've got is my headlights work in reverse. So that means I need to reverse the radio and then switch the two motor wires, but that's not a big deal, and we'll get that taken care of, and we'll button this thing back up together. The instructions aren't really clear about which wires go where, so I thought I'd do a little rundown. This, this diagram they give you actually is helpful because it tells you which pair of pins does what. Like here's headlamps, right turn, fog lamps, stop light, reverse light etc. A lot of these aren't used. And then each channel here has two different pin locations. 
So you can see that, for example, here's the the uh, left turn. So I've got the both the front and the rear plugged in. These are just our normal uh, lights. So I've got the the stop lights hooked to that. Then I've got my right turn, and then I've got my two headlamp positions here. Uh, the servos come in channel one, channel two, channel three goes up to the to the light bar in the top, and you can also servo control that. So if you put a wire harness in here, a Y harness, and you had a radio with an extra channel, you could you could operate through nine different functions automatically with your radio. The uh, tail light, the the red ones in the center, and then of course the two turn signals on the outside. So that's the red one coming in here to the center. Um, pretty straightforward once you you get past the uh, the poor translations in the manual. And uh, actually the lights work really good. I like this little system. I will put in a, uh, a multi-channel radio in the future uh, and have a lot of separate light functions through this on my radio and probably um, some just switchable from the radio. I'm planning on using a six-channel radio. Uh, pretty straightforward. N no big deal. I think I can get everything run. I'm using Y harnesses that they give you back here. They it comes with a nice selection of wire harnesses and extensions so you can pretty much do whatever you want and uh, run the wires wherever you'd like. So the light system, thumbs up, very nice, uh, and that's how you hook it up. Do not lose those manuals because there's no labeling other than that. Lights look good. I hooked everything up again to make sure that when I turn right, the right signals were on and left the left signals were on. I mounted the circuit board in the rear bumper. You can see when I go forward the lights stay the same here in the back. Headlights come on and when I stop the brake lights come on. So that's all working good and the uh, right turn and left turn work fine on the back bumper. So I'm going to tag these wires where they go, slide all the wiring up the chassis and put it back together. I pulled the, the light bar up here and it's a one-piece circuit board with surface mount technology and I can't see anything wrong with it but one light is out so I'm going to just get a replacement for that and put it in later. Um, other than that, I think we're, we're set with the lights. Get this thing put back uh, together. Just show you real quick since I have it apart pretty good view of the scale engine in here, which is the Detroit diesel, the V8. I know later models had a Caterpillar engine that was different. And uh, it's pretty neat, they even got a fan here on the front of the engine, very scale looking. If I can hold this thing up. Yeah, it turns with the engine, so everything uh, Looks as good inside as it does outside. Boy, this thing's heavy. Lights are plugged in. I just wanted to make sure you note that routing the wires around the back of the cab here and around the fan blades on this motor are really tricky. So just make sure you tie wrap everything up in there because otherwise your fan blade is going to suffer. So I'll get this thing down and I didn't put the engine cover back on yet, but the lights are all in. Should be able to uh, test them out here. Turn down the lights in the shop. You can see the beacon, the warning lights. They go into forward. The headlights come on. Fascinating. Well, that was interesting. I turned the wheel and all the lights were flashing. Well, what happened was this rear light assembly mounts in here, and these solder joints were touching the metal bumper. 
So I'm going to add a little spacer around where the screw goes, and then I'm going to cover those uh, solder joints with a couple, three layers of tape and put it back together, and that should take care of my problem. All right, took care of my shorting issue in the rear bumper, so let's try this again. We should have right turn, left turn, forward, brake lights come on. Around the other direction here. The uh, light bar is working. Mode switch is up here. Except for that blue light, which they're going to uh, replace. And then I should have right turn, left turn, and headlights. All right. Lights are working like they're supposed to. Tomorrow, I'm going to... Uh, this over here. I've had a lot of questions about the rear differentials. Can you lock them? Uh, what do they look like inside? It came with locking pins. I can't even see a place to put them on the outside. So tomorrow I'm going to remove a rear axle, take it completely apart, see what kind of a job they did building it and greasing it. Always worry about pre-built kits. So if you want to see what the inside of the diff looks like, um, I'll have a video up on that soon. Thanks again for watching and uh, please subscribe.